Okay, so we're going to have to use our microphones, otherwise no one online will be able to hear us. Where's the camera? The camera's right over there. It's just in front of you. All right, so we'll uh, open the meeting back up. Uh, we were in closed session. There were no votes taken, uh, nothing to report out. Uh, we're at uh, public input. Correspondence has been attached, anything that was submitted, and we'll open up for public comment. Um, and someone had asked about forms. I just said that we would, you know, there's not that many people here, so we can work our way through as public comment. Um, and again, it's uh, three minutes uh, and one time through. So this is the order. Is that those are the people in. Those are the people in order that I'm asked to speak first and the items that they wanted to speak on. Oh, okay. All right. So um, Carrie Friend is um, first up. Uh, yeah. So I also want to speak later on. On 9.4. Right. Okay. Board bylaw 9324 on minutes and recording states the superintendent principal or designee shall distribute a copy of the unapproved minutes of the previous meetings with the agenda for the next regular meeting. The board shall approve the minutes of circulated or if necessary amendments. This isn't happening. I asked about this last month as well. Uh, Mr. Smith emailed me this week that he was posting the draft minutes. He didn't say where. And when I asked, my question was unanswered. I did eventually find the link on the Board of Trustees tab on the school website, but I can't access the file. And I received an HTTP error 404, so I haven't been able to read the minutes. Uh, board bylaw 9320, meetings and notices states, whenever agenda materials relating to an open session of a regular meeting are distributed to the board less than 72 hours before the meeting, the superintendent or designee shall make the materials available for public inspection at a public office or location designated for that purpose. As the document was not posted, I would like a copy to read prior to your approving the minutes. Otherwise, how is public supposed to be able to read any minutes and have a comment if we can't see it? Uh, Susan, I, Susan Matthias, I assume. Yep. Okay. After speaking at last month's meeting and reviewing it on YouTube, I feel I must speak again. Scott, I'm shocked that you could not muster the decency to offer Brandy Likes an apology. You went to great lengths to describe yourself as a local boy done good, even going so far as to wear your letterman's jacket. I am here to tell you we saw right through it. What we saw was the stage performance by a self-absorbed individual who couldn't do the right thing. Rather than attempt to make peace and undo your wrongs, you gave yourself an undeserved five-minute self-congratulatory pat on the back with only a couple of sentences apologizing to Roberta and one sentence about Brandy with no apology. Cayuca School deserves better. Mr. Casillo, you commented about your friendship with Scott. I quote, I have known Scott for over 50, 50 years. If he tells me that something happened, then it 100% happened. This shows us that you are a dear friend, but it also points out that you are ineffective as a school board member. You cannot make him out to be some sort of Abraham Lincoln, Cayuca style, especially when there's so much evidence to the contrary, and manage him in his position as superintendent. Remember, you're serving the public, not Scott. As for you, Mr. Dial, when you arrogantly interrupted me, you did so in violation of your own board's public comment policy based on government code 54954.3. It states, the board will listen but cannot engage in discussion or take action on items not listed on the agenda. According to Robert's rules of order, Mr. Giles should have gotten permission from you, Mr. Casillo, to speak before interrupting me. He clearly did not, and you obviously showed no interest in stopping him. Mr. Gile, I find it interesting that as a self-appointed truth police, you chose to call me out. Why? Where was this righteous indignation and demanding of the truth when Scott berated people? I'll tell you where it was. You just sat there as you did when a prior speaker last month made baseless claims of COVID vaccines killing people. 
You said my letter was full of untruths. Was Scott lying when he said Brandy called it foul the time suck? The email say he was. Did I lie about whether or not Scott fired Brandy? No, because she quit several months later on her own. Did I lie about staff not complying with COVID protocol? No, Brandy's correspondence shows otherwise. She provided you with evidence. But once again, when she offered to answer questions, you were silent. In closing, I'd like to address the three remaining board members. You've witnessed the loss of two valuable staff members, the blatant public intimidation of a parent, the public attack on a person's integrity, the flip-flopping of the obviously flawed let them breathe resolution, the mishandling of a simple request to record school board meetings, which led to a petition, the obvious abuse of power of the board president and Mr. Guile and the superintendent gone rogue. At what point is enough enough? Unless you speak up and exert your power, the stakeholders have no choice but to assume that you condone this behavior. Jeff Held is next. Hello, my name is Jeff Held. I'm the father of a fourth grader and a seventh grader and a recent graduate. Okay, because I'm also a not so recent graduate of the school. I'm here tonight because you're going to vote on a new board president. And I want you to consider whether uh, Mr. Castillo is well suited for the position. Again, because of his close relationship with Mr. Smith at the last board meeting, as Susan just said, Chris said something along the lines of, I've known Scott 50 years. If he says something's true, and it's true, this is somewhat alarming and shows that there is a potential for a conflict of interest. So please consider this when you're voting tonight for a new president. Thank you. Okay, I had somebody else come up that wanted to, I, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, please. This has nothing to do with anything on the agenda, but that's the perfect. Okay. So I wanted, I talked to Ms. B about this. I want to discuss the advisory classes, the advisory, the advisory class that the kids have that we, or that everyone thought it were, that you, I don't know, whatever came up with to help kids who maybe lost some schooling by being at home. And um, it sounds like it's going on into the next trimester, but when I got Brooke's grade, she's a sixth grader, and she got all A's and a B minus in advisory. I was like, that is so, that's such a disconnect for a kid that gets all A's. And I know some other students were the same. And I know that the B minus wasn't, you know, graded or whatever factored the same into her GPA. But I just wonder, what are, like, do we have metrics with this? Is it really, are we, is it really doing anything? Because when I asked Brooke, she's in the gym and previously, I don't know if she's still sitting on the floor, but she's sitting on the floor with her computer and they're kind of just, you know, oh, it's supposed to be self, you know, regulating. You, you do this and then you go. And if you have questions, then there are other teachers around to ask. But that seems so silly to me. Do you think a sixth grader is going to be in her advisory uh, or his advisory, and um, remember, like in I don't know, an hour or two, to go find whatever teacher like might have an answer for them on like a math question, you know, that they don't know. I, I mean, the drama teacher, um, sorry, Victoria, Miss Victoria, I think is in charge of Brooks group, and I just I don't know. I to me, it just sounds kind of like a waste of time. Maybe not for all the kids, but. I think that there's kind of a waste of time and I'm not sure it's helping everyone. And I would love to see if it was and get, but I really, to me, it looks like boredom, maybe like, okay, we're kind of checking the box. Like we're going to, we're saying we're doing this because we're going to make up for it. But is it really being monitored? Is it really making a difference? I feel like what would make a better difference is to hire a, 
bloody Spanish teacher and have all the kids take Spanish. Why? That's not happening in our school. I can't even believe it. I went to school a long time ago and I started taking French in sixth grade and you just took it. Like you took a language. It was in California. There wasn't, oh, maybe you can do that. I, I'm so confused why we don't have that here. I really, really think we are way behind. So I would be jumping up and down if you guys said, oh, okay, you know what we're going to do? I mean, because you know, learning another language, I'm, sh I'm sure I've done my three minutes, but it's so important for kids and for their brains. And I really wish we were doing that instead of advisory. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we didn't have the form. So is there anybody else that wanted to comment? Yeah. Uh, my name's Amy. I'm a parent and I have some questions for our superintendent and for the board just to consider. I don't expect answers. So to Scott Smith, when are your superintendent reports and your parent square posts going to be about students and learning and not about your feelings? Number two, we lost our STEM teacher this school year. So how are students going to be addressing the new science standards, the new NGSS standards? Is that falling back on all the classroom teachers? How will you support them? What resources will they get? Perhaps there's a new partnership, maybe with the Cal Poly School of STEM Education or Parks Department. We're a small school, we're a stone's throw away from the ocean. Maybe a cool marine lab, something would be great. I mean, you did accomplish that interdistrict agreement and that was an accomplishment. So what else can we do? The last meeting you said the only relevant information you had to share was um, that Coast was going to get a new principal soon. So that should be good news for Cayucas. My question is why should anything happening at Coast Union impact your job performance here at Cayucas? And for the board, how do you evaluate his performance? What are the performance indicators you look at? What does it include? Are there surveys for staff? Do they have an option to be anonymous? I think we should, all stakeholders should know what that is. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And um, again, I'm not sure if there was anyone else that wanted to make public comment. No. Okay. Does have anything to say after that? I did want to say one thing because it's come up about what he, what I said last uh, meeting about how long I've known Scott. So if you remember what was going on was there was a personnel matter that was being discussed. And I've managed HR departments and I don't feel comfortable discussing personnel matters in public. It's a private matter. And I'm privy to details that the general public is not. So my comment in saying that was my way of saying that I understand everything that was going on and I was comfortable with the situation. Okay, that's why I said that. Again, it's a personnel matter. I don't think it should be discussed in public. Some people were and that's their prerogative, but I'm not going to. Uh, the other thing that's kind of come up is uh, concerns about a friendship that I have and my ability to manage them. So uh, I know uh, some people made some comments and then Paul and Rihanna wrote in, there might be some other correspondence that I didn't see. But um, I have a lot of managerial experience and I would gather probably more than anybody that's made a comment about it. Um, and I don't uh, agree with the managerial type of uh, adversarial relationship. I've managed hundreds of people in multiple entities at a time. And I had great friendships and great relationships with people. And that's not necessarily incompatible with managing people. People that know me know I'm a fair, open-minded person. And so you can be friends with somebody and manage them. I've done it for years, hundreds of people. Uh, uh, what else did I want to say about that? Um, I just think that the most important thing on managing a person, whether or not you have a personal relationship or not, 
is that you have a uh, honest, open communication. You know, you, you can communicate with them honestly. That's the most important thing about managing a person. And again, I've been friends with a lot of people I've managed and it hasn't been a problem. So I'm sure I'll get some flack about that. And anybody who wants to write in or say something, I'd like you to point out how many people you've managed in your career and what your experience is because it's adversarial relationships with employees, employers, went out in the middle ages. It's okay to get along with people you manage. Anyway, that's all I want to say about that. Okay, section five, approval of minutes. So the board might want to report on this. Um, we did, I thought the minutes were posted on our website. Seemingly there's an HTTP error and they're not coming up. So even though I thought I had distributed draft minutes um, and had them posted, I just checked the website and they're not working. So the board could decide to um, postpone approval of these minutes and bring them back next meeting. Um, there's no rush on approving these minutes. I'll uh, make the motion to do that. It would just be continue, continue to the next meeting. To honor her recognition. Sure. I'll second that motion. We, we actually don't need to vote on it. We just need to ask to continue it. Okay. I mean, unless there's no consensus, then we wouldn't need to vote. No, it's fine. Um, okay, so presentations. I'm not sure if there's anyone here for Sound Liz. Yeah. Yeah. here um right now our asb person is out on um sick leave for a few weeks but we still are going on with some activities on campus um we've got a pajama day on friday it is the final day before our winter break so it'll be another fun day they're going to be starting a couple of um, service projects coming up they're going to have to decide what they are um Troy and I have been kind of talking and that needs to happen more at our school. So right now we're also first grade is running a, um, a service project for the seniors in the area. So they've been taking collections of food and, and those types of items. And there's a lot of stuff in that room that they'll be handing off. Um, she's done, that's kind of a um, yearly project that first grade has done and our librarian, um, Helen Tomek is assisting her in that. Uh, endeavor this year. They are busy. It's a small little group. Um, so they're still still busy doing all kinds of little goodies. We're hoping to have another dance in the spring, early spring, when it gets a little bit warmer, maybe late winter. Um, but as soon as Victoria gets back, those dates will get a little bit more settled. But they're fun, fun little group. Thank you. Uh, PTA? No. We did have a meeting yesterday. I don't remember exactly how much money the um, carnival made, but they 86. made a record amount and um, a record amount. It was over thirteen thousand in the um, in the auction, and that takes a lot of work. I know that um, Mrs. Madonna it was it was her kind of um, first voyage in that. Mrs. Ridout helped her. Um, but it was a really fun event and they, so they talked about that a lot and it seems like Mrs. Madonna is going to jump right into that, into that for next year. And then they are, so they have some funds available and they really want to help our kids um, and our teachers. So we're hoping to get some more field trips, which will happen. Some places that we would like to take our kids are not taking kids until, or we can't sign up until after the first of the year. So um, for instance, Rancho El Choro has been taken over by Camp Keep, which is um, also part of Kern County Office of Education. So they'll start hosting day trips and then also there's some of their night trips will start where we want to be able to take our kids to some um, possibly Getty Museum and back up to San Jose to the um, Science Museum and then to the Rosicrucian Museum for the sixth graders. So we're trying to mesh those together so we can do it all or the San Jose places anyway, um, mesh them together so they can go one half the day and then the other half. Um, so, but they're always very supportive. They've got a lot of really good ideas. Um, Mrs. Armstrong came up with a, 
with a fun idea about a, a clothing exchange and maybe having two, one at the beginning of the, before the school year starts and then one coming up in the middle of the year and people bring gently used clothing to, to share and you bring clothing and we set it up on tables and people come in and what they need and take what they need and leave what they want to share with other people. I know that years ago, our, um, our former cook in auto washer at, at school candy used to do it with a lot of adults on campus and we used to, and, and in the community and we used to do that. And it's a really kind of a fun, an event. So, and then we were also talking about maybe having the, um, having the kids do little fundraisers, maybe bake sales or hot dog sales. And so they help pay for their field trips and things that we go on. So, anything else I'm missing, Amy? It's a fun group. Um, there were a lot of people there last night at the meeting. So it was nice to see that. And lots of good ideas were being shared and thrown about. And so I think it'll be fun. Hard to wait for the building to change. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. What's the clothing exchange? So let's say you have some clothes that you're not wearing anymore and you might need some things or like sporting um, equipment that right, kids need. Right. So you, your kids have grown out of them. You might bring that or shoes. It could be anything. Shoes, jewelry, glasses, hats, um, clothing, but you bring it. It's all separated into sizes and type of, type of item. We're really just creating a space and an opportunity for our members to serve each other by exchanging what they don't need anymore with things mm -hmm. that other families need. Right, and there's no cost involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah no cost involved. Right, that sounds great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh health and safety committee i'm not sure if there's yeah so we had another meeting today um health and safety committee committee continues to meet and so that we can um, receive our our site um safety money and there was a um, concern brought up at today's safety meeting regarding um the bus so we're going to be um looking at a little bit of that um, reaching out to parents to list some of their support with their students on keeping their face coverings on um, inside the bus. Um, and other than that, everything keeps going pretty well. Okay, uh, section 7-1, board member reports. Any members have anything to report on? No? Well, uh, for me, I uh, I purchased one of the trees and the reefs, and I gotta say it was very well run. I think I pulled in and in a couple of minutes, they cut the end of the tree off, loaded it up, and I was on my way. So <laughs> it looked like it was going pretty well. We had uh, Christmas in Cayucas and uh, we had a record number of kids that went from five o'clock until the last two young kids came in to see Santa at two minutes to eight. So it was a lot of kids. And that was on Saturday, the previous Sunday when we lit the tree up, there were more people downtown for a tree lighting than I've ever seen. It was just huge. So it was a very, very successful event. And when eight o'clock came and closed the cottage, there were tons of people on the street just enjoying themselves, having a great time, and a lot of noise. That was the first time I've seen that much activity after eight o'clock. So uh, the people at the pharmacy were one of the stops, and they had a ton of people. But they also projected a movie up on the in their parking lot. They had a movie going, and so that the people that participated said it was a great night so great okay uh superintendent report yeah so a couple things um the tree fundraiser i believe it brought in almost 8600 in profits um really impressive and um you know that's for the most part a uh, fundraiser run by the staff or the students and then the parents um, all came in and helped unload the trees and get them moved out and so some volunteers helped on that but um, Melanie really um, steps up and does that annually and so I want to thank Melanie for her 
because really normally a business manager wouldn't be that involved in a tree fundraiser. But thank you, Melanie, for all you do around here. I'm not sure if you're online right now. Um, also got an updated uh, construction schedule regarding the classroom project that we're working on. Uh, completion date now um, is expected by the end of March. So um, we've moved past, obviously you can see the framing over on the far side of the yard. Um, it's once we got past the foundation, things are starting to move pretty fast over there. Um, it was, that was the delay, was the corner of the foundation over there um, due to the um, surveyor issue. Also, um, the board approved our ESSER 3 plan, um, which inside that, I believe we designated close to $150,000 for a permanent shade structure in front of the cafeteria. So I'm going to be working with our architect and, um, and trying to um, work on that with him and then um, source what type of shade structure we want. And so I'm hoping to have um, either draft proposals or maybe even contracts back to the board at the February meeting um, and get that going so that we could hopefully have that done and in place for the beginning of school next year, um, if it could be built over the summer. Outside of that, um, that's all I really have unless the board wants to ask me any questions. I've got a I've got a question sure. for you, Scott. When you say that the money for the trees is a fundraiser for the teachers to use. No, I'm kids? sorry. Okay. The staff runs the fundraiser, but it, it all of that money goes to the classes. So um so that's what helps pay for what usually was the Yosemite trip. Um, last couple of years, though, because we weren't able to go to Yosemite, all the kids got a brand new laptop to take to high school. So that that money goes straight to those classes and is wholly spent on those classes. Um, any comments on the inner district? I see. No, those are just listed um, yeah. for board reference right. because it's got student information. They're listed under the executive section of the yeah. board agenda. Okay. Okay, consent agenda. Excuse me, I've, yeah. I've got a question on that. What's our total attendance now? Oh, excuse me. So, you know, the One exact five on the amount. Right. Yeah. I got straight. Yeah. Share my notes. Okay, uh, any members? Go ahead, Susan. Uh, could you use the microphone so they can hear online, you know please? Okay. Okay, consent agenda. I don't know if any members have any comments on anything, any of the items on there. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Okay, Trustee Guile. Aye. Trustee Brownell. Aye. Trustee Wright. Aye. Good thing we love kids. <laughs> Trustee Schuler. Aye. Trustee Castillo. Aye. Thank you. Five zero. Okay, uh, section 91, I didn't see any uh, definitions on there. I'm assuming that's the case. No, it's a standing item and we didn't receive any of those. Okay, okay uh, interim financial reporting. We get a staff report on. Yeah, thank you. Pla I'm proud to present the first interim report to the board. Um, as always, um, you know, the most interesting thing is page nine, the multi-year projection that really shows the overall financial health of the district. Um, I know that the board's aware that as we engage on um, building a classroom, uh, we decided that we could um, 
do some fund transfers and borrow some money from other funds so that we could avoid um, going outside for any financing. We can avoid any um, interest paid. We can avoid all of the bank fees that would come with that. And we can avoid all the attorney's fees, um, which are significant. Um, for example, the last project I did, lighting and solar, um, $1.2 million project. I'm sorry, it was a $2.1 million project. And that cost over $30,000 in legal fees to have those documents set up. So significant savings by us doing it all in-house. Um, we knew that that would, for us to complete that project, right, it's going to kind of um, stretch us a little bit thin. And I told the board at the time that um, I estimated that we would come in with at least a 7% reserve this year um, after paying for the classroom. Well, good news is at the bottom of page nine, you can see that our estimated reserve is coming in at 10% this year. Um, so it's 3% above what um, I estimated as would be our minimum um, after building the classroom project. And then I, I expect that the district will, um, you know, just slowly kind of recover from what is some planned deficit spending to build the classroom. Um, so that's uh, the main thing in there. I think that she might also like to, it to be pointed out that it shows that we um, spent, and this is general fund on this, only on this multi-year projection, we spent $456,608. We're going to spend more than we brought in this year, but 500000 of that is the loan to fund 40 to build the classroom. So reality is we're bringing in a budget that's in the black if you if we weren't building the classroom. Um, but because we're building the classroom, it shows as a $456,000 deficit. Um, but that's planned deficit spending to build the classroom. Um, in the out years, uh, our estimated um, reserve level um, was coming in at 11 and 11 in the second and third year, 11%. And then the board might also be interested in looking at two pages later, page 11, um, our tax revenues. We got an update from the county regarding our tax revenues for 21-22. And it looks like it's coming in at 5.37% increase. So the tax base in Cayucas continues to move forward at around a 5% clip. As you can see, our out-year budgets are all built off of 4%. So again, we're doing conservative budgeting to make sure that we live within our means. Um, the, on the following page, um, there's a bunch of assumptions that are in here. And I would just direct you to the um, Two thirds of the way down the page, the CalSTRS and the CalPERS employee rates and how those are going up. We're sitting here right now for CalSTRS at in the 21 22 school year at almost 17%, 16.9%. And that's going to be going up to 19.1% next year. And then it levels off at that level. So we'll will at that point um, reach the peak of the current teachers um, <clears throat> employer rates for their retirement contributions. Um, but the CalPERS one for all the classified staff, you'll notice that right now we are at 20.7% and that's gonna go all the way up to the 24, 25 school year, 27.7% um, retirement contributions. So, um, getting close to 30% there, 28% almost um, for classified staff. So um, those are built into the budget, but um, it's it's been something that's been impacting the budget over the last few years and the PERS ones continue to go up. Um, I had a question. So the, uh, the CalPERS, the rates, the, these aren't projections, that's they they project that far out what it needs to go up to. Right? So the CalPERS, they're set by the CalPERS board. 
And so they control their own rates. Um, I believe the cow stirs um, ones are set by the legislature and it takes legislation to change the rates. So yes, these are all set. And, and I'm, if my memory serves me properly, I believe that stirs is set by the legislature, CalPERS is set by their own committee um, or board. Any other questions on the first interim? No. You know, part of um, what happens with this is Melanie does a great job implementing what Rebecca and I at the county worked on together. And, um, and so I want to thank Rebecca and Melanie and their partnership um, because it takes a lot of partnership to make sure that we have a solid budget that can um, maintain student needs. Okay, if no other comment, I'll make a motion to approve the first interim financial reporting 2021-2022. I'll second. Trustee Schuler, Aye. Trustee Wright? Aye. Trustee Brownell? Aye. Trustee Guile? Aye. Trustee Castillo? Aye. Five zero, thank you. Uh, nine three, uh, there were some policies that were renamed, deleted, amended. Yeah, this, these are just some technical changes, recommendations from CSBA. Um, we, made, we made no changes to their recommendations, so these are straight from um, CSBA. So I just recommend approval. Um, it's mainly updating um, some pretty insignificant stuff, names and such, whatnot. All right, I'll make a motion to approve uh, 93. The renaming, deletion, and amendment of uh, some of these policies. Second. Trustee Brownell? Aye. Trustee Gall? Aye. Trustee Wright? Aye. Trustee Schuler? Aye. Trustee Castillo? Aye. Five zero passes. Thank you. Okay, we're at nine four, and I know we had somebody who wished to make public comment. At the April 14, 2021 Zoom meeting, I made a public comment about developer fees, only to be told I was harassing the superintendent and Superintendent Smith muted me, denying my access to the meeting, a clear violation of government code regarding public access to meetings. Uh, developer fees used to make a classroom is not an appropriate use of the developer fees. Developer fees are to be used to mitigate the impact brought on by development. Currently, even on your enrollment of 175, you guys are experiencing declining enrollment. So there's no impact from development coming in to do the classroom. California Government Code 66006 requires a local agency collecting developer fees shall, not will, shall, within 180 days after the last day of each fiscal year, make available to the public developer fee information for the fiscal year. The local agency shall review the information made available to the public at the next regularly scheduled public meeting, not less than 15 days after this information is made available to the public. Notice of the time and place of the meeting, including the address where this information may be reviewed, shall be mailed at least 15 days prior to the meeting to any interested party who files a written request with the local agency for a mailed notice of the meeting. On November 16th, 2021, I delivered a letter to the school addressed to Superintendent Smith and all the trustees by name. Valeria emailed me a developer fee report that had errors. On the bottom, it says it was passed, adopted, and approved by the governing board of Caicos Elementary School for the 16th day of December 2020, not 2021. The resolution at the top of the document said 2021-14. The resolution in the footer of the document said 2020-10. When I pointed this out, Valeria responded, quote, it is current. Super Superintendent Smith modified the old version. Our apologies if we miss a date change. I will get it taken care of. 
Perhaps the superintendent Smith is not also superintendent at Coast Unified. He would have more time to pay attention to details. Developer fees is an important detail. It's not just a slight, oh, here's a report that we need to fix. How can you be sure the report that you have in front of you is correct? I was never mailed a corrected report, so you have not met the requirements of California Government Code 66006, and the developer fee report should not be approved. Okay, can we get a staff report on that? Yeah. What part do you want me to talk about? Um, the letter also does some correspondence. Pertinent points. Um, yeah, the footer might have been messed up. I don't know if Valeria fixed it. Um, and as far as the report goes, um, we use the same template that San Luis Coastal uses. It's the one provided by Lozano Smith. It has all the required information in it. Um, we emailed Miss Friend the report. It was provided more than 15 days before the meeting. The report you sent me was not what you have on your agenda. Okay, so I've gone round and round with you on this, that the law says the information has to be available. It's not a specific report. It's not a specific format. I wasn't thinking. Carrie, we, uh, so you already had your public you comments. You had so public comments. Just uh, the highlights. And then as far as compliance with the law, I know that we no, spent money on attorney yeah. and verified that we're in compliance, correct? Yeah. Reality, it, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any, any members have any comments, questions? I was just pointing out that I know this has come up and we uh, sought counsel and verified that uh, we're in compliance. So. I can't hear you, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't mean to talk, but in part, I don't like. You can't hear this? No. Oh, I couldn't. Okay. When they were talking. Oh, 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 that's all right. Okay. okay. So, what were you saying? Just, just that we sought outside counsel. This has come up, and we're ver we verify that we're compliant with how this law works. So, anyway, just want to point that out. We are. Are, are you saying we are compliant with the use of developer fees? That too. No. Yeah. Okay. Building a classroom is an appropriate use of developer fees. Right. It's a, it's expanding capacity. It's the most appropriate use of developer fees. And frankly, when the justification study, which was approved and voted on by Ms. Friend when she was on the board in 2014, that established the rates in this district, um, it just seems kind of ingenuous that now she's so against them when she voted for them at that point. You can't disparage my name like that. I'm not against the fees. I'm against using Carrie, we already had public comment. I'm okay. not going to stand by and listen to him disparage. We're, we're not going to have you just right. You're the, the distance, only one that so. gets to disparage people. I'm just supposed to be sit here and be bullied. Right. Okay. Oh, anyway. Sorry, Mr. Smith. Now, anyway, uh, so we verified it's appropriate use right. of funds. We right. verified we're compliant. There's uh, some technical issues maybe we need to work on as far as some errors on the report, we can correct them. They're immaterial. And we are in substantial compliance with the law, which is the legal threshold. I make a motion that we approve resolution 2021, the annual developer fee report, five-year findings. No second. Trustee Wright? Aye. Trustee Baronel? Aye. Trustee Guile? Aye. Trustee Schuler? Aye. Trustee Castillo? Aye. Thank you. Passes 5 0. Okay, section uh, 9 5. I don't know if there's any public comment. Superintendent, contract. Okay, so uh, we were discussing this in closed session and we needed more time as a board to discuss. Um, we 
go to closed session now or do we have to do it again? No, we have to do it according to the okay. adopted agenda. All right. So um, I would like to go back into closed session then and finish our discussion. All right. So, so, so this item is not intended to be voted on tonight. We're going to go discuss. Well, you, we got to follow the agenda. So either you vote on it in open session or it gets kicked down to the next meeting. Okay. Five, nine, five. I didn't hear. It's getting moved to the next meeting then. We can't go back into no. the session? So we vote now? No, or it, we were you gotta, out of time. Well, you uh, could have made the public wait, but you can't, you gotta follow the agenda. We can't just bounce back and forth, back into closed session, back into open session, okay. unless you had adjusted the agenda at the beginning of the meeting when you voted on it. All right, so what did we decide to do? Take it up in the next meeting. Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna work. Okay. Eight ten one election of board president. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just clarify. So there's a, there's a superintendent contract, and then we have a shared services agreement. So um, there was some revisions that were being proposed for that, and that was something we were discussing in closed session, and we ran out of time. So now at this point, we're going to uh, move that until next meeting. I just want to clarify because there are two separate documents, and they actually should be voted on separately. And so when you come back to this, you can't vote on two different things. One, you can approve one and you can well, nothing's happening tonight, so we'll we'll clarify next week or next week. Come back to it. Right. Uh, there are two different things. Okay, ten one election of board president. Members, uh, the procedure we have is uh, well, every, everybody can state their interest. Whether they want to be president. Yeah, so usually what happens is um, anyone who's interested or willing to serve as, as board president um, would say so. And then um, people vote a name. I'll select randomly out of the, the cup and you guys vote a name in a random order. And then we keep voting until you reach three. So can we nominate? Well, typically we've asked people if they have interest. So you can nominate, exactly. but then we need to know if somebody is willing to yeah. do it. Well, I nominate Chris Castillo to continue another year. I'm fine with that. I want to name, nominate Steve Kyle. <laughs> I'd be interested in doing Okay. Val, any interest? No, I've already <laughs> had my opportunity. Okay, so you ready for a first name? Okay. Trustee Schuler. Voting items for the public again has the right to make a comment. You're going to vote on it. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you could have voted, you could have commented at the beginning. You can. Well, All right. Any public comment, comment on section 10? Ask your comment before we start. Well, I, I'm sorry. That, that was another thing that you should look at. That, Fair enough. There you go. You're on. Having a discussion, the public can vote. I mean, comment during the con during the discussion. Right? Yeah, that's right in there. So anyway, I just wanted to make a comment. I know things have been this. I'm usually really loud, so um, we need it for online. Okay, thank you. Um, that um, things have been really um, uh, chaotic, and I just got in on this at the end. And outside of policy. The last two items were about policy. Um, my main concerns are procedure and the procedures, you know, things that are going on now. And this this relates to who's going to be president. And Chris, no no offense to you, but you're making you're you're uh, uh, making motions and you're not supposed to. 
you have certain powers, but but you, you can't make seconds and you can't make motions. That's 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 it. I mean, that's Robert's rules of order, which things no, go through. Yeah, anyway, that's I, not the way I understand. Okay, well, okay. I, anyway, I, did you have a comment no, about ten one election yes, board I president? I, okay. I was just trying to uh, right set the stage for that. Um, uh, I, just say, okay. I just wanted to say, um, I understand what happened last year about, you know, that whole problem of everybody took a step back and you ended up being the president, it sounded like. Um, the, um, but as having served on the board, you know, for like 22 years and in your seat for eight, um, uh, we came up with a lot of procedures. A lot of good people mm -hmm. spent a lot of time. I've served with a lot of good board members and there was a lot of effort put in to to making it as smooth as possible in the face of a lot of uh, uh, controversy and procedures are what hold it together and i'm seeing that there are issues with that and just to be blunt chris um in the in the last meeting that i saw on zoom um you had board members speaking and you're supposed to control that in the meeting and it's not allowed. It's just in you broke you broke the Brown Act there, Steve and Chris. And if you're the one in charge to control the meeting, uh, you can't control it if you don't stop that. And it's it's not optional. It's not anything. It's 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 there. Actually, it's in every agenda we have. It's the only piece. There are two things in there. It's the only pieces of Ed Code. Actually, they're government code that are in our agendas and they're in every one and they're there for a reason. There are instructions to the board, there are instructions to the public and what their rights are. You, know, you sit on the board and you have you have certain authorities, but that comes with following the right, you know, the rules and protecting people's rights. And that's all messed up. And I, I can tell you from experience that the chaos you had last meeting comes out of that. And it's not hard to fix. If they call it a cure. You basically have to stop doing it, but it means you have to know and you have to acknowledge it. And so the point of this is I, I watched the meeting and Chris, again, to, to be blunt, and I know you're here. We're all here because we love the district. I mean, we, we love the school. It's a great school. But um, I'm afraid you become a, become a lightning rod and there's like a fire burning. And I personally, and I get a lot of calls from people, both parents and, and community members, because I know a lot of them from my years, and they want things like they were. They can be calm, we can still have controversies, but it takes that, that control over the board. And I'm afraid that you're gonna continue to be a lightning rod, and it's not gonna be good for the school the board it reflects on the board and and it reflects on you and you know you've done a lot of good things this year but I, I i see this continuing on in the next year and so the bottom line is you're talking about rotating through board members which we did for a long time and uh i've been on the board like in, in your seat for like four years somebody came up with the idea let's start rotating through to to spread out to spread out what's going on, to spread out direction a little bit in those procedures. And uh, so I'm coming to you and saying it might be better this year to take a step back instead of this continuing on, because there are, there are a lot of upset people. And you wrote back to me and it sounded like you were saying there are a few malcontents or troublemakers. Well, that's not really the case. And so I'm just saying that it might be better for the entire district for one year, you know, you might might come back the next year, but this next year is going to be tough because there are a lot okay, of things. I appreciate the yeah. comments. Okay, I'm just saying, yeah. No, no, I, I, I get it. Yeah. And, you know, there's a pandemic going on, so things have been a little chaotic in that yeah. we keep changing where we're going. Typically, we have forms so that people can fill them out and speak, and uh, I appreciate what you've said. Yeah. I don't remember saying malcontent, so, but, um, I, I but, but, but yeah. you also, I know you were talking about there being uh, Brown Act violations, but you never gave any specifics. 
Instead, you went to Jim Brescia and just started acting like everything's wrong. And so I, I, I can take criticism. Oh, no, no, that's no. fine. And so specifics are always good. And so I don't want to waste every time. If you've got something, I'll gladly talk to you afterwards or, or, or send me the specifics. Okay. But I look at I look at the table here. We all used to have to have computers because we were on board. No, we were on uh, agenda online. And in in this agenda, which you guys don't deep dive into, there's a statement. I wrote it out so it. It would be clear to you, but if 